Hi Dean, um, what's your analysis of, analysis of Friday night a few days on? Well, first of all, it was a huge disappointment for us, the result. Um, you know, no one we could go third, I think it might have been in the league. Was, you know, it, was a, it was an opportunity to miss, we felt at the time. Um, having scored so early in the game, we had a great start. And had a good chance to take it to 2-0. Um, and then we probably sat off them a little bit and allowed them to sort of build some confidence in the game. And that was a that was a big disappointment. Of course, the, the three goals that we conceded, it is, you know, I don't think Birmingham have had to work too hard to get them moments at our goal. So that was the big disappointment. Um, and of course, second half, as we always do, we you know had a right goal and we created a couple of good chances, um, and just couldn't do enough to get back into the game. So, um, you know, with 72 hours on from there now, and only probably 48 hours on to the next game, which is a massive challenge against Derby County. So all our focus now. Um, He's on that game, um, and obviously part of that is, is analysing what's gone previously. So we've done that today with the players, and you know we move forward pretty quickly. A lot of the fans discussing the difference between home and away forms. Obviously, second in the league on away form, which is tremendous, but home form is obviously a bit different. I think it's three wins in the last nine. Where, where do you stand on all that? What, how do you see it? I mean, is it a long-term kind of problem? Because I think last year it was. Um, similar kind of ratio in terms of having the way. Yeah, I think I think first and foremost, I think when teams come here to Ashton Gate, they, you know, they respect uh, the, the quality that we've got in our squad and our team and of course, not all the case, but certainly when Birmingham scored the other night there, you know, they'll sit behind the ball and, and make it difficult for us and, you know, historically in the last couple of seasons, we've, we've, we've struggled against teams you know, that have sat deep against us. We've got to find ways to, you know, to break that down. Um, the other way of looking at it is if we, you know, we beat Derby on Wednesday, we can go. I think it's three points difference between our home record and our away record. So, um, of course, we want a home strong record in front of our own supporters. We want, you know, we want to get good results. We want, you know, some great afternoons and evenings here at Ashton Gate. And, and people will say, you need a strong home record in any division. But I think what matters to us is where we are at the end of the season. <laughs> Ideally, we want to get our own record, you know, right up the top of the league. But certainly, our away record is very good as well. Is that something you've worked on? Because I know how you guys work on stuff on the training pitch and that, but specifically breaking teams down. I guess you have looked at that, won't you? And yeah, of course. It's a, it's a, you know, huge part of the game for us. Uh, as I said there, especially when teams are sitting in. So um, we look at every single part of the, the game plan, the process. Um, you know, for us, we don't want to make too big a deal of it because I think sometimes you can create, a, you know, a bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy. You can, you can make it out to be bigger than it is, of course it's something that we want to eradicate you know, as quickly as we can. Um, but again, we don't want to put too much pressure on the players, you know, teams are going to come here and, and get behind the ball at times. We've got to, we've got to probably be more patient in our play, more purposeful in the way that we play forwards, uh, but, but maybe some you know more patient in certain moments as well. What did you make of Philip Benkovic's sort of first half an hour as a Bristol City player? Well, it's never easy coming into a into a team at this time of the season, I think he's he, uh, him and uh, Naki and Marcus are. Um, that's the first time I've called him Marcus. I keep calling him Henrik, just naturally. <laughs> um, you know they've all settled in well off the pitch. I think the club do a great job at, at making people feel welcome with the families and, and things like that. So they seem really settled, and um, you know Philip got his first few minutes the other night there, and he'll be all the better for that. You can see already his qualities that he's got with the ball at his feet. Uh, he's a ball playing centre half. Um, you know, be disappointed with the goal late in the game. I don't think we defended it as a, as a team very well, but uh, he'll be all the better for a, for his first few minutes in a Bristol City shirt. Another goal for Jamie Patson. I just wondered, have you noticed any difference in him since he's come back from Derby County? He's more annoying most of the time. <laughs> um, I think Craig, I had a good chat with him this afternoon. Good, great credit to him. I think he, he obviously he went away at the start of the season, and people maybe outside the club and maybe part of himself maybe thought that was his City career over, but. Um, didn't quite work for him as he would have liked at, at Derby County and he came back to us and he's had to fight to get back in and around it. Uh, I think you remember the first few games he came back, he, he wasn't straight back in. So um, his performances in training, first and foremost, is what's got him a spot in the team and, and he's been clinical in his finishing. He's created some good moments in our attacking play as well. And, and as well as, as much as anything, he's just been a great lad around the place. Um, in fairness, so not that it wasn't before, I have to say, he's really bubbly character really good for the dressing room um, but he's become a bit of a leader uh, in the way that he's come back and the way that he's responded to as I say to a little bit of adversity in his career and fair play to him. Are you surprised at all by how well he's come back and 
nicking these goals and assists? No, not at all, no. Um, I've known him a long time. I played with him, used to rip me to shreds in training most days. So I know uh, we all know the quality that Jamie Patterson's got. Uh, it's just a case, I think, of, of, him, of him finding um, that consistency in his performances game to game. And at the moment, he's flying. And Derby County then, how's the squad looking and how's Thomas Callis doing at the moment? Yeah, he's trained this morning, Thomas, so he's he's, he's in and around it now. Obviously, lacking match minutes, but um, now he's fit and, and raring to go like everyone. Was he going to play in the under-23s game? Today? There was a potential he might have got some game time. Obviously, it's been postponed, uh, I think, penciled in for tomorrow evening, so we'll see on the uh, we'll see where we're at with the storm for that one. And um, Marley Watkins, how's he doing? I think he's kind of last He's a little bit further behind than Thomas Marley. He's going to be a few weeks at least, I think, before we'll see him. We'll see back out on the training picture. How do you see the challenge of Derby County? Well, we played in pre-season. We had an interesting game against them pre-season, didn't we, out in Florida? And the, I think that was the early stages of, of Philip Koku's career at Derby. I think he's a fantastic manager. And if, I think if you look through their squad, they've got you know a lot of experience in the championship. And I think they'll be probably hoping that they'll have been a bit higher in the table than they are at the moment. But you know they're not too far off it. And I think they'll be secretly thinking they can maybe go on and run and sneak in. So it's a massive test for us. Um, you've got the obvious threat of of one of the country's best in Wayne Rooney, of course, that everybody's talking about. And at the same time, you know, there's threats right throughout the team going forward. So it's not, you know, we don't have to just focus on, on him. There's other threats in the team we've got to be aware of. But certainly, you know, when we take the game to the opposition and, and, and we come out flying, then we're a match for anyone. Yeah, Wayne Rooney, have you ever come across him before, Dean? Have you played against him even? I think... I played against him in a testimonial game once, yeah. I think it was Barry Fry's testimonial. Yeah. How'd it go? You, uh... The result wasn't great for our, for our perspective. Well, it was a great night for Barry, I'm sure. He was a full house at, at London Road. And, um, yeah, I think, to be fair, Sir, Sir Alex brought the whole squad down for his, for his game. So it was, um, yeah, a great experience to play against some top players, but difficult at the same time. We've just been talking to Narky Wells there. Um, how's he doing in training at the moment? Could he start possibly on Wednesday? And if if you are going to play him, do you have to then change system to bring him in? Well, we'll see on that one and we'll see where we're at to Tuesday morning for, for the training, see where everybody's um, looking in training. But certainly Narky's come in and he's, he's been clinical and you can see already he's a fantastic finisher off both feet. Ariel is a, he's a threat as well. So, you know, delighted to have him in the squad and uh, yeah, he's definitely pushing for a start. Casey Palmer, I think he said he had some chest problems the other day, but is he better? Could he be in? Yes, the yeah, seems like he's over it now. Um, train Saturday morning, and uh, and obviously train this morning. We we didn't get a, um, we got the back end of the storm at the end of training today. So we managed to train at a time where we, we managed to get most of our work in, and then just right at the tail end we got the the sideways hailstone came in. So that was interesting for some of the the players that have not seen that type of weather before. But no, we're looking uh, we're looking all right. Yes. You mentioned Naki. Is there a, a way that? Could be fit into the team and retain the attacking players that are still starting at the moment. Yeah, I think so. I think we've proven throughout the season there's you know different formations, different again, it's not always about the formation, it's how you play the formation. And you know, players that are fluid and can and slot, I think Pat was a good example of that can slot into uh, different styles. So, yeah, of course, we're looking at maybe getting Naki into the team. Um, as soon as Lee feels he's ready to go in, then he'll be in. Um, and in terms of the other name, you mentioned Beck, which obviously. Um, Marcus, Marcus wasn't involved. Um, his fitness has been, uh, at least he was almost like being surprised how fit he is. Yeah. Um, is he obviously made the bench, so I would assume he's, he's very much. Yeah, I think he's so. played. I think he's played five games this season, only for I think one ninety minutes. So his, his match sharpness, his uh, fit match minutes, he's not where he'd want it to be. Obviously, he's not come from an injury, as he's come from a you know for whatever reason wasn't playing his previous club. So you can see he's been working really hard. He's he seems a fantastic sort of leader type. Um, character so um, he's been working really hard you can see that he looks fit I know what the gaffer means aerobically he looks like he's fit enough so you know again if he was to start how long he would get without, without that lack of match minutes we'd have to assess it um, you said about the, but don't want to sort of dwell on the Birmingham game as such but the, the goal <coughs> that we conceded what was it you said that made it too easy but what was it was it an errors thing or was it position lead or what was it that you didn't I think before? yeah I think we go right back to the start of the, the phase I mean for, for any goal there's normally Three or four or five uh, mistakes, if that's what you want to call it, that normally lead to a goal, and it's about you know somebody mopping up the previous one, and when you get two, three, four on the spin, it leads to a, a good chance at goal and normally a goal. So, yeah, for us, I think there was definitely some positional issues, and and uh, you know obviously 
you know, balls coming into our box like they did for the first two goals are going to be difficult for the goalkeeper with men going across the front of him. So we've got to do more to stop the supply as well. Um, was it kind of a surprise in a way, given the defensive performance of the previous four? Um, sort of yeah, I think Birmingham are a decent team and they've got some decent plays in, in them wide areas and um, you know, it was a challenge for us. Um, but every game's different and um, yeah, we've looked pretty solid. We've, we've kept some clean sheets in the previous games and we've given up three goals of an out, like I say, that we're not, that we're not happy with. So it's about getting back to being solid again on Wednesday but making sure we retain that, you know, that attacking part of our game as well. Where do you kind of like, almost like zooming out, looking at the team, looking at the season? how it's panning out, is it how you kind of want it to be, a little bit off where you want it to be, a little bit ahead maybe you thought it was? Question. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm very much a half glass full type of, type of guy and I think most of us are around the club. I think certainly we would, everybody would like to be higher. Um, but for us, we're right in the mix, we're right at the top end of the table. If we'd, you, you say focusing out, if we'd have been sat pre-season looking at the the fixture list as it as it comes in front of us now with a couple of months to go I think we'd have all said you know we want to be right in the mix and we're right in the mix with teams to play around us so uh, for us that gives us a lot of excitement uh, some big games coming up in front of us and uh, you know no more so than on Derby on Wednesday night it's going to be a great game for us and you know we're looking forward to bouncing back that game or sorry this game the last season was kind of the one I know it did mathematically mm. but almost the playoffs were kind of yeah pretty much gone when they came here and won. I mean, is there, has that hung around at all oh, feeling going into this just game? Just hung around, yeah. It's always in the, of course it is, yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's always in the back of your mind and that's what fuels the, you know, the passion to, you know, to get over the line this year. Mm. Um, a massive carrot in front of us. Uh, but there's probably, what, 12 teams who are probably still thinking they might have a sniff. So, you know, again, we, we, we keep that excitement in the back of our minds. We keep reminding the players of what's in front of us. But at the same time, it's just about you know, focusing on that next one, Derby's a, a big test for us. And uh, as I say, we've got to bounce back. But Derby in particular as a team, that's not one that... Because obviously the away win earlier in the season was really... That was celebrated pretty hard, wasn't it? Well, to be honest, to I think mean, most... It to mean something. The yeah, no, I think most of our away wins are celebrated pretty hard. Yeah, 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 that's true. And um, no, I think... I think some of the, most of the players... Not most, but there have been quite a few players have left since then. Of course, of course it, it sits in, inside, but it's not about going... Um, Getting revenge or anything like that, you know what I mean? It's it's about us focusing on us. Okay, thank you. Okay, cheers, guys. <laughs>